Welcome to Disability Life TV. My name is Yvette Pegues, and we are on the Disability Life TV network with BizLinks TV network. I'm here with a special guest. His name is Terry Moore, and we're going to talk about some things that is going to explode at some point. We're going to talk about MC Light. We're going to talk about the best disabled speaker in the country. We're going to talk about DJ K Rock for those of you who are back in the days with us. But more importantly, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Terry Moore. You have no idea how excited I am to have you on the show. There is so much to discuss, Thank but you. let's start with your birth. Is it true? Have I heard correctly that you missed a possibility of not even being here and all those who know you? Is that even possible? Very possible, very possible. In fact, what happened was when I was born, the doctors actually told my mother to give me up for a nursing home. They said I wouldn't amount to anything, and they actually almost convinced her to put me in a nursing home, but thankfully, I'm still here. Wow, so a nursing home. Can you give me the age that you were at which a nursing home was recommended? Uh, it was probably regarding uh, very early. I was a baby, around two or three years old, and because of my condition, I kept actually sitting up and falling over. Uh -huh. I couldn't hold down milk, and so because of my uh, condition, they thought it was best that I be put in a nursing home children in a nursing home so I don't have that personal mm -hmm. experience but I've read a lot about it and if I understand correctly would you be in a nursing home with elderly like generation 100 like 80 <laughs> 90 100 seriously yeah. so you would be an infant in a geriatric home yeah from, because yeah. of developmental delays or concerns am I hearing that correctly yeah because you're thinking about this I mean now we're a lot advanced but this is back in the mid 60s okay so uh, things were definitely thought uh, completely different the way they are thought now got so it. absolutely yeah. got it yeah we're going to have a show specifically on that and I understand mm -hmm. the depth of what you missed mm -hmm. so I'm thanking God and your mom and everyone well, who made you. that decision I am too. <laughs> for making that decision absolutely so tell us about your childhood my childhood was great. I mean, there was, uh, because of my disability, there was times that I actually wondered why was I disabled? Why was uh, I at this point? And you go through the different phases of blaming yourself, blaming wow. God, blaming wow. everybody else. Wow. So it took me some time to really get into the mindset of, I'm okay. So wait. We've not known each other <laughs> back in your <laughs> New York days. You're yes. talking about the 60s. Uh-huh. But you said a word, and I know the name of the show is Disability Life TV, but you said you were disabled. Uh -huh, Please yes. explain that. Looking at you, I don't see it. Well, explain to our viewers, what exactly is your disability? Well, my disability is actually when I was born, my mother had the German measles, and I was born with cerebral palsy, which affected the lower limbs of my walking. And a lot of people don't know this, but I actually have a 70% hearing loss in my right ear. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Should we switch seats? Yes, tell me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. This is a host chair, you, so you'd have you, to interview me. You, you should see me in the car. My music is blasting. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, you heard me. Come yes. in. <laughs> yes. I have no excuse, but cerebral palsy. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about that condition and German measles. I'm sorry, I've never heard of that. Yeah, nowadays nobody has it because it's probably non-existent. But German measles was something that happened in the mid-60s. Like uh, Many people don't even have it or heard of it now. Right. And cerebral palsy ranges in from different stages. Got it. There's some people like myself that are affected only by walking. Mm -hmm. But there's some people that are actually confined to a wheelchair where they can't speak, they can't talk, and sometimes they have to actually be fed. It really yeah. restricts your motor skills inside your body. Got it. So you're saying the 60s. Mm -hmm. So was your mother a nurse? I mean, how were you cared for if she didn't put you in a home, which is what was recommended at the mm -hmm. time? How were you cared for? Do you have siblings? I'm, I'm totally interested. Strictly trial and error. What? <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's, that's yes, a good mom. Absolutely. Good you mom. know, her and my yeah. father, you know, they, they, they did it. They, they basically uh, learned by trial and error, and they found out things that they didn't know, and they learned a lot of stuff. Wow. And, yeah. So let me guess, are you an only child? 
I'm an only child. Yeah, yeah. I'm not spoiled though. But yeah. <laughs> I, get that I don't know about that. I don't know. <laughs> because you know what they say about first children, right? Yes. Like my baby, uh, I stayed home with him for 18 months. The second one, right about eight or nine months, I'm like, you're good. Yes, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. So I yeah. love the trial and error piece of it. And you're an only child. So were you raised around other children? How did that feel? I mean, did you know? I mean, okay, let me rephrase that. At what point did you know or believe or accept that you were disabled? When I accepted, uh, didn't happen until I was actually in high school. Wow. And basically what happened was uh, I was hanging out with some friends in New York. We were at the park. And they decided they wanted to go to the store about maybe a block away to get something to drink. Okay. And I said, well, when you go and get me something. And they said, well, what's wrong with you? How come you can't walk? And that's was my oh. light bulb moment. I said, well, you know what? They're not going to treat me any different. And so, I therefore, can't. I got up and walked that block with them. And from there, I've been walking ever since. Wait a minute. So, wait. Up until that point, you weren't physically walking independently? Is that well, mentally, I would walk in that day. I was always walking, but mentally, I started walking. Spiritually, okay. I started walking in that day. Okay. Yeah. I can get deep sometimes. Let's get deep. But let's let's <laughs> explain that to our viewers. Tell me what you mean by mentally and spiritually you were walking. Well, I'd, I'd like mentally and that. spiritually walking, meaning that up until that day, I was just as a disabled person going through the motion right. of uh, basically it's all about me and I'm, woe is me, I'm the wow. victim and it's about taking care of me. But that day when my friends said... Well, why can't you walk to the store? What's the matter with you? I realized that people weren't going to coddle me anymore. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and that was the day that, yeah. And prior to that, you know, I had friends that were always doing things for me. You know, I'm from New York, so if you're on the train. Yes. And somebody gives you the seat because you're disabled, I really could stand. But back right. in the New York days, I'm like, okay, they're going to give me the chair. Mm. I'm going to take it. But now mentally and spiritually walking, yes. when somebody says, hey, can you want the chair? I'm like, no, I'm good. I like that. It's a different, different mindset. And yeah. that's important to me because, obviously, I'm in a really cool chair. Yes, you are. It's a power chair today, but I'm usually in a manual chair. Uh -huh. And I get the question a lot. I feel so bad for you. And I say, listen, you can pray. <laughs> I love prayer. But I'm walking and running and yes, dancing in the exactly. spirit. Because unlike yourself, I wasn't born with a disability. So uh -huh. I'm pretty new to this amazing community that you are showing Welcome. out in. Welcome. So tell me again, mm -hmm. at what point... After you made that spiritual, mental, and emotional leap into manhood, mm -hmm. when is it that you met this pretty great guy who is the world's greatest disabled speaker? Well, you know, he is a great guy. <laughs> known him for a long, long time. I'm hoping so. <laughs> and um, I realized after my musical career that I had a story to tell. Mm. And there were a lot of people that wanted to hear that story. So I decided at that point that there was time that I needed to get the word out because there's a lot of people that need the information. And if I've got the knowledge and experience, why not share it? Yeah. Were you asked or did you volunteer the information you're speaking of right now? Or oh, I'm always book? volunteering. Yeah. I'm always volunteering. I so mean, this is not a new you. Oh, uh, this is yeah, this, this is me. I'm, people will tell you all the time, <laughs> when you sit down and talk to me, have a pen and paper. Yeah. Because I'll start rattling off information. So when I met you, you were emceeing... A fashion yes. show. It's yes. called the Disabled Fashion Show. Yes. There was a specific name for it. Uh -huh. Can you tell me a little bit about that? The Char Court Fashion Show by Sharon Gary. Right, right, right. And Sharon did a wonderful job. This is, I want to say, her second year. It is. And uh, amazing, not only did she have able body models, but she also had disabled body models. And it was great seeing people walking from all walks of life down the runway. That's right. Showcasing fashion. It was great. And what I loved about the fashion show is that these were not big brand clothes. The right. actual designers were present mm -hmm. and they made the clothes couture Yes. for people with disabilities and not just physical. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. There was you, obviously. Mm -hmm. We'll talk a little bit about all of you. Oh, thank but you. But there were also sponsors, a pretty, pretty healthy audience. Yes, nice audience. Tell us about that. How did you get that gig, if you will? Well, you know, I do a lot of marketing on Facebook and right. Instagram, and me and Shannon have been friends for probably about two years now. Okay. And so I spoke at the first event that she had, and she invited me to come back, which I was honored to do so. And uh, she said, hey, do you want to speak? And, you know, with me speaking, it's just like, what time do you want me there? How long do I need to speak for? And what's the topic? And, yeah. I love that entrepreneurial spirit. And you talked about 
connecting on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So before we take a break, okay, tell us how we can reach you on your social media platforms. I, I tell people all the time, just Google me. Type in Terry, <laughs> T-E-R-R-Y-M-O-O-R-E-R. -R -E -R. Instagram, Facebook. My website is terrymore.com or terrymore.info. But Google me and I'll definitely pop up. We're going to go to break, but I love that you said Google me. I don't know when that became a verb, but that's probably a totally <laughs> yes. different show. Uh, yeah. But let's break for our sponsors. We love our sponsors. Without our sponsors, neither Terry nor I would be on yeah, the Bizzlings TV network. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. What happens when soldiers come home? Brene Foundation offers hero support to ensure that our heroes abroad can continue to be heroes at home. We link veterans with organizations who are dedicated to guiding the transition from military hero to civilian hero. If you want to find out how you can support our troops at home, please contact the Brene Foundation or visit Brene.com. Does your son need a more challenging, focused, and encouraging educational environment? Renaissance Christian Academy is an affordable private school for boys located in McDonough, Georgia with certified teachers that are uniquely equipped to help your son master learning. You're welcome to schedule a tour of our facilities by calling 770-305-9881 or by visiting our website at rcaboysacademy.org. Renaissance Christian Academy, developing young men to be great leaders through Christ-centered learning. And we're back. My name is Yvette Pegues, their host of Disability Live TV, and we have Terry Moore here with us. I have a question for Terry. You ready? I'm ready. So what does Paper Thin, Self Destruction, Sinead O'Connor, MC Light, DJ K Rock, and Lady Marmalade have in common? You know what? They have the hottest disabled speaker in common. Really? Really. And Absolutely. who would that be? <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> so wait, okay, so I, I mean, like, I don't usually have this uh -huh. on set with me, uh -huh. but I almost ran out of breath, and uh -huh. that's not even half Thank of your you. bio. Thank you. I appreciate that. They obviously have you in common. Yes. Tell me about Paper Thin, Self Destruction. Those were music videos? Yep. Well, Paper Thin was a song that MC Light put out back in 1988. Okay. And uh, I was actually in the video, oh. which is very interesting. It's my only only time of uh, uh, theatrical fame, if you want to say. So wait, were you dancing? What? You know what? Actually, I was. Ah! <laughs> uh, I was <laughs> doing a little head bopping at the time ah. with my Prince Jerry curl. So the verb, Google. Google. Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. Right. So as you can tell, definitely changed from Prince to LL. There you go. <laughs> I've seen you on Facebook, uh -huh. and, and a lot of your photos very much resemble LL. I, I love the fact that we can tie all this into not just a speaker, but before the break, you mentioned music? Yes. Please mm -hmm. elaborate. Well, I've actually been involved in the music industry since 1986. My career started out at Evergreen Recording Studio, working behind Roy uh -huh. Ayers and Yoko Ono. Then I went from there to Billboard Magazine, where I had the opportunity to work with uh, let's see, Bill Coleman, who managed uh, Jody Watley, Nelson George, who print, who works with Chris Rock, and Craig Coleman, who now runs Atlantic Records. Went from a Billboard magazine to First Priority Music, worked with MC Light, Positive K, and Audio 2. Worked with Kenny Smith, who used to be NBA player for the Houston Rockets and now TNT. Wow. And then from then went on to work with a clothing company called Major Damage Clothing, which actually used to be Sergio Valente Jeans before they sold Sergio and started their own hip-hop line. You're dating yourself, sir. I am, ain't I? Yes. I am. I'm now, you 20. talked about all the people you worked with. What did you do? What kind of work were you? Mainly marketing and PR. Really? Yep. So, okay. So, before the break... Mm-hmm. You were all these different people. How did you settle into the marketing that led into now this amazing world-renowned speaker? Take us through that journey. Well, I really uh, have no background, no educational background in PR. Wow. I went to work for First Priority Music, which was uh, owned by Nat Robertson and had MC Light and Positive K on it. And I came in the, the position as radio promoter. Okay. And he came in my office two weeks later after getting the job and said, you're now a publicist. Had no idea what that was. <laughs> right. I got had no idea what to do. And okay. I learned on the job uh, and got light gigs on Arsenio Hall's show and Essence Magazine and 
Joan Rivers show and it was all by trial and error just learning and so I know that because of the music industry so many kids right. need the knowledge yes I started going around and speaking about my career and being disabled okay there's a couple things I want to say mm -hmm. how did you say you learned trial and error and how did your mom learn Trial and error. You, yeah, just definitely. Just like every other child. Yeah, exactly. So you got it honest. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure I heard that. Yes, correctly. absolutely. <laughs> and I also heard that your speaking was more of a give back process yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. Tell was, me about that. I love speaking. I love being able to share my my journey with people, mm -hmm. uh, especially being someone that was not supposed to be here, right? And someone that was just you know that is disabled, that had a great career in music, and still has a great career in music. So I want to be able to motivate people to say, if he can do it, I can do it. So, you motivated me before we even met. Well, thank you. Likewise, likewise. And I'm excited about that because you're not just a publicist, not just a promoter, not just a speaker. Mm -hmm. But is there something starting with A happening soon? A? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Actually, I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> like, dude. I don't know. I've yeah. heard some other things going yeah, on. Well, I'm, one. I'm trying to stay at one right now. Okay. But, uh, author, yeah. I've uh, written a couple author. of books. So, so yeah. wait. Author is not someone you know. It's something you do. Absolutely. So another verb. Absolutely. Your book. Yes. Tell us about your book. My book is actually called Fearless Dream. I'm actually working on three books. I just finished Fearless ah! Dreams. <laughs> and uh, Fearless Dream talks about my journey in the music industry. I'll, uh, in the chapters, each chapter I'm actually talking about a specific person. Got it. But you don't know who I'm talking about until you get to the end of the chapter. I love it. Yes. I love it. Yes. And is your cousin or your cousins uh -huh. in the book? Yeah, there's actually a story with me and Light that's actually in a book. Actually. So for those of you that were listening, we're talking about Light. MC Light, Lana Michelle. MC Light. And her last name is? Moore. Moore. Does <laughs> yeah. that name sound familiar to you? If not, Google it. Yeah. They, and there's yeah. another one, K-Rock? DJ K-Rock with his Kenneth Moore. Light right. DJ. Last name? Moore. Moore. Yeah. So did you know once you got into this field and into this business that you'd be surrounded by family or did you pick that up as you went? I mean, were these people you grew up with? How that how that work out? Well, definitely grew up with K-Rock. Got it. Uh, I've known K-Rock since I've lived in Queens and he lived in Staten Island. Got it. And okay. Light basically was, uh, ran into her when she was about 15 or 16 and we started comparing notes. Got it. And then recently uh, met another famous cousin, Sarah Dash, on Facebook about two years ago. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah. And for those who don't know who Sarah Dash is, that's... Lady Marmalade. Lady LaBelle. Marmalade. And that's LaBelle. not the one you spread on bread. Right, exactly. Right? There you go, there you go. <laughs> exactly. So, I don't want to miss the opportunity to talk about all the different colors and shades and body of work. I mean, do you take what you've done to build who you're going to be, or... I mean, what are your plans? What's what's next? I mean, I'm almost afraid to ask. I'm running out of room on my paper. <laughs> With me, I have a what if theory. Uh, what if theory. Uh -huh. And the what if theory basically is, I wonder what it would be like to jump out of an airplane. No way. And that's what I did last year. I wonder what it would be like to write for magazines. And that's how I started writing for In fact, my first magazine that I wrote for was Write On. Write On Magazine. Cynthia Horner gave me the whole issue to write. So I live by what if. Like, Who's I Cynthia wonder Horner? what it would I'm be sorry. like. Who's Cynthia, Cynthia Horner is actually the editor for many years of Write On Magazine. Okay. And was very close with Michael Jackson and the whole Jackson family. But Write On Magazine was sort of like the black teen magazine in the 80s and 90s, uh, even the 70s. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You're going to have a lot of head shaking on the other Yeah, side of exactly. Camera. Exactly. Write On Magazine. Yeah. So if you don't already know Terry Moorer, Use a verb to get to know him because That's obviously true. his energy is consistent. He's always like this. This is not his <laughs> TV face. Yeah. But what's more exciting to me is what you align yourself with. True. There's some integrity there. Can yeah, we yeah. talk a little bit about that as we close out? I know integrity is important to you. I know both your parents are still alive and in New York. Uh, one is New York, one is in Georgia. No, yeah. okay. Yeah. And tell me about your son. Oh, great. Well, you know, integrity is very big to me because in order to maintain a reputation in the music industry, especially right. in this, this business, you have to have character integrity. So I'm very right. thankful that 40 plus years later that people still come to me asking me for advice and people wow. still reference, 
refer people to me, so that's very important to me. And I'm blessed to have an 18-year-old son who is going to college next year, who is constantly bothering me because now he wants to learn how to drive, so he's always oh, asking no. for the keys. <laughs> you know, it's pouring down rain, yes. and he's like, can I, can I drive? <laughs> and not your car. I've heard the story behind your car. Right? Oh, that's you know my story. Yeah, that's yeah. his second child. We won't yeah, get into that de- <laughs> definitely. So yeah. he's asking for the and the thing about it, I told him, okay, I'll let you drive. Now he does drive my car when I'm sitting there, but we're driving around the parking lot. Right. But he wants to drive downtown. Of course he does. And I'm like, we're gonna rent a car for that. <laughs> we're gonna rent a car for that. You can that's smash. A good you can smash up the rental car. That's right. <laughs> but not, uh-uh, not the truck. And I love how you tie integrity into your son. And that's why I brought it up. Yes. Because you're obviously motivating people Mm -hmm. in your job, in your work, your body of work, your music, your books. But when you get home at the end of the day, you want your son to not have to look beyond that door, that front, back door, window, otherwise, to find a hero. Right. And I do believe that just in the things you've done thus far, because I know you're not done, Mm -hmm. you have been more than heroic. The name of the show is Disability Life TV, but there is no disability here. In fact, you choose your disability. And your ability is so much greater than your disability, which is why in this show, we spell disability with a lowercase d and an uppercase a. And what we do at the end of every show is we have something called a D-Life Diamond. Mm. And a lot of times what we do is we just wrap everything that we've done in the time that we've been given for this episode, mm-hmm. and we say, well, what do we want to walk away with? What is the the diamond? You know, what is the jewel in what was said today? And there are so many jewels. I'd like to please, if you give us the honor, leave us with something that we can hashtag and, and get all over Facebook and your <laughs> social media and Google. But what would be your D-Life diamond? What is it? What is that nugget that you like to share with our viewers? My nugget is really, I'm just glad to be here. Wow. I, I, I think I'm thankful for every day. Mm. And life is a journey. I just say to people all the time, what is it that you want to do? Wow. And fear is really the only thing that's holding you back. Wow. I mean, I tell people all the time, I'm afraid of height. But jumping out of the airplane was a wonderful experience, and I'm thinking about doing it again this year. So really live your life. And... If you walk away with anything today, every day is the first day that you begin your life, your journey. Right. So don't think about what could have been, should have been last night or, or yesterday. Just be thankful that you're here because a lot of people didn't wake up this morning. You're right. Absolutely. And do you mind if I add or maybe elaborate a little bit in that not being able to drive mm-hmm. when it's raining yeah. might feel like the worst thing that could have ever happened yeah. to you. But instead of your mom taking on an attitude of, of pain and mm-hmm. an attitude of feeling sorry for herself. She said, guess what? I'm going to raise my baby. Yeah. That's my boy. Mm-hmm. And look at you now. Yeah. That is pretty amazing. Yeah. Hashtag grateful. Oh, I like that. Does that Definitely. put it together? That sounds good. Absolutely. It does sum it up. And I love that within the boundaries of this organization, Bizlinks Life, uh, Bizlinks TV and Disability Life, there really are no boundaries. Mm -hmm. And not everyone on the show has either an apparent or a disability at all. Mm -hmm. The wonderful thing about this show is we talk about life. Yes. And if your life happened to start differently or maybe three years ago, like myself, changed, then guess what? You're welcome to be on the show. You're even more welcome to sponsor the show because... We have gentlemen, women, children, and people who care about life. Not just disability yeah. life, but guess what? Living life. Absolutely. So tune in next time for Disability Life TV. And how can we reach you, Mr. Terry Moore? Just Google me, Terry Moore, M-O-O-R-E-R, or go to Terry Moore, T-E-R-R-Y, M-O-O-R-E-R.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.